Welcome to an emergency special episode of the Hearthstone Report. A couple of balance updates have been announced yesterday and they're going live on Wednesday, which is tomorrow. Yes. And uh, we're going to talk about those and uh, give our opinions on this, these nerds that are coming up and what that might entail for uh, the future meta. Uh, quickly, let me just say, um, you can go join our Discord server. We have a link to that in the description if you want to talk to us and our community, which is fantastic, by the way. Uh, and you want to you want to have some hard some discussion? That's the best place to do. So obviously, also the comments of this video. Uh, let us know what you think about this. But we're gonna get into and subscribe the, uh, to the channel to keep up with all the hard news. What JJ said. So we have four cards being changed, and uh, I love three of them and like one of them. Slash neutral. Um, how about you? You wanna you wanna say something about that? Um, I think that it, some of it is a bit of overkill, but overall it's pretty mm. decent. Um, let's start with the first one, I guess. Yes. Which Evil, Evil Miscreant. Miscreant. Evil Miscreant, the three mana, usually one five. Uh, rogue rogue minion that was introduced with Rise of Shadows with combo at random lackeys to your hand is now going to be down to four health, which is. Not a very significant hit to exactly. what it does. It's just, it's, I think this is very, very fair. I feel like this is one of those things that comes up like every 20 to 30 matches mm -hmm. where it's like, oh, yeah, huh, my, le my, uh, miscreant died. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's like, like now I can coin out Darius Crowley on four. Oh, yeah, that's, that's actually true. That's because I've been playing only Warrior for basically this entire expansion. That's kind of how, that's kind of how I'm, um, no, but for me, it's that. always like, the miscreant barely ever gets killed that mm -hmm. fast. Partially also probably because of the high health. I mean, now two treants can yeah. kill it, which is also very preferable exactly. for that matchup. Um, but oftentimes you'll just hit it into like a South Sea deckhand, and it'll have three health. In this case, two, and then you bounce it. It's like yeah. it's a slight it, thing. It, I think I think it oftentimes it won't come up. It's a slight thing, and I believe along with the other two nerfs to that deck, that class. Um, it's, it's, it's going to be just about the correct level. Next card, this one I've been uh, advertising for, Strongly Raiding Party. The three mana spell that drew you two pirates and on and with combo a weapon is now four mana spell. That still does the same thing. I love this nerf. Uh, I think this is this has been a long time coming. Prep into Raiding Party was oppressive, was disgustingly oppressive. Uh, and this is, this is a fantastic nerf. I'm personally not that huge on it, but um, it, it totally makes sense. Yeah. I, I'm not opposed to it at all. I am actually kind of low-key glad about this. I used to like playing uh, the Tempo Rogue, but I also was, at the same time, also playing Token Druid, and I was better at that anyways. And now, because it yeah. relatively becomes better, that's, of course, good for me. Uh, I think this is very reasonable. Yeah, Rogue... The thing is, with Rogue, it, it, it's already very good at drawing, anyway. That's what they said in, said in the statement, I believe, too. Yeah, Rogue already excels at drawing, which is correct. And uh, Raiding Party... Specifically, with Waggle Pick being introduced, became just too strong of a card because you just have too many things that you can do. You can play the um, the prep rating party miscreant on turn three, Waggle Pick double pirate on four, you win, basically. So with two lackeys in hand, with bouncing potential, way, way, way too strong. The Waggle Pick also, all basically, always having a Waggle Pick ready to bounce your Leroy for unfair combos and damages, basically. <laughs> um, so I'm 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 very glad about that nerf, and along with that goes the third one, also to Rogue, which is the card preparation. Probably the most uh, anticipated nerf in the history of Hearthstone, because people have been talking about this forever, like literally ever, throughout the history that this card should be nerfed. That this is the one that I probably like the least. I'm, I mean, no, this I love is it. definitely the one I like. I, I like I the least. absolutely adore it. Um, this fucks with the basis of rogue a bit too much because the problem is that a lot of rogue cards not not all of them to be fair i mean ready party was definitely a bit of an oversight there but a lot of rogue cards were designed already acknowledging that prep exists mm -hmm. and makes them cheaper so now you have the case where some of the higher costed cards become even harder to reach and that actually this is where i want to say reduce sprint to six just do it sprint to six it's not. It's not an oppressively rank card, anyways. But then and it's the same. It's the same value with the prep later. Again. That is the idea. But the prep sprint was never oppressive. Mm, it was never a problem. It was, it was strong. But I like the idea of nerfing prep because of its its versatility, right? It's still gonna be a good card. You're still reducing a card. You're still gaining two mana from it. 
for zero. That's good. Honestly, I've had turns where I prep Evist. Yeah, but still, it's it's a good. So thing. yeah, no, because it's a good card. I literally prep Evist to set up a combo with a with a three drop. In that in that case, it was SI seven. It could have just one, but Edwin, um, and that doesn't change. But look at like look at uh, co- like slightly comparable cards. Farsight, Haunting Visions. This is zero mana. Reduce a co- like next spell by three. The targeted spell you want to play by three. That's ins- that's insanely insanely strong. And I I don't know why it ha- why it hasn't been targeted much much earlier. You know, I believe it's been a long time coming. I like I I really like. I mean it's it's a more limited innervate mm-hmm. for one more mana, and <laughs> that stays true thanks to both nerfs. Um, and the problem really here is that it's very limited in that Rogue doesn't have that many spells. It's very, it's very minimal class. Rogue doesn't class. have that many spells, but it has good spells. But, uh, a lot of the spells, again, are kind of designed around preps. So I think that, you know, I think Sprint is, like, the one card that they could easily, like, buff a little bit by making it one cheaper and to kind of counteract this nerf without really... Changing the dynamic of Rogue too much at all. I think I think all those spells were in mind though when they when they came up with the prep nerf. And one mana raiding party is in my opinion still too good. And this case raiding party will be two mana, which is fine if you expend two cards for it uh, and two mana crystals. So in that case, it's okay. But because of the combo potential with certain spells, <coughs> and uh, especially because prep has been like in every Rogue deck ever always been one of the most important ones it's still gonna be a good and used in a lot of them at three it was way 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 too strong uh and has made rogue to large degrees monotonous for a while and and that makes and that that's what makes it bad too if it's always the same and you can't really do stuff about it that's that's not very good to play against for the most part and also for most for a lot of people not not very good to play so i i absolutely love the raiding party and the prep nerf the miscreant one I also like. I think it's a little bit softer because obviously it's a health nerf. It's not a cost nerf, which are usually harsher. I still think this deck is going to be good, by the way. I still think uh, the Temple Rogue, as we know it, is going to be played with slight altercations, maybe. But it's going to be played at a fair level. It's at a power level w- comparable to other decks. Yeah, I think this is uh, the point in the meta where the Token Druid and the Murloc Shaman are getting a lot... <laughs> more fair play again because mm-hmm. before it's like if you want to play that kind of deck just play Temple Rogue instead and it kind of fills awesome. a similar niche especially for the, uh, comparable to Token where it has late game potential and the early game burst but you but you also do have absolute sickness with uh, with the combos you can pull off and um, now it's it's more that those are three decks that are on a similar power level which is good but with with slightly different play styles and then it comes more down to preference Rather than just one deck being that much better. Also, the rogue is the least enjoyable to play against with a control area at the deck for sure. I've I've heard I've heard some people in Discord talk about this too. People have been uh, vehemently asking for rogue to get nerfed. I honestly, uh, although I have lately not played that many control decks, I generally preferred facing the rogue over uh, the druid. Really? No. In, in recent in recent days, in recent time. Uh, Although bo- then again, posts, again I, I haven't post, uh, I've, I've been playing more aggressive decks, and c- concerning aggressive decks, they usually match relatively well mm-hmm. against the rogue as well compared to other aggressive mm-hmm. decks. I, I like all these three. I think uh, the rogue is gonna be balanced, and if it turns out to be terrible, I would like that even more because I like the deck. But the last nerf that we have is uh, Archivist Alisiana, and this has also been one that was been suggested a lot. Specifically, this is nerfing Control Warrior. And its ability to play the Elysiana when you had zero cards in your deck, bounce it with the with the Baleful Banker or a Panda, and then play her again ten cards later to go basically forever and win every game of fatigue. Now, uh, Elysiana goes from eight mana to nine, which basically makes it so that you can't bounce it at the same turn anymore. So if your opponent well, has, you can, yeah, but you, you have gotta, to go second. You have to go second and keep the coin. Which is, you know... Some people have said that that means that now the Warrior Mirrors literally get decided by who gets the coin. Um, I'm not so sure about that. I, because, I don't think because so. Because if that's true, then people will start playing Mechathum instead. There's, you know. First of all, Mechathum was always the choice for the Mirrors. Second of all, if you're really running a bounce just for the 50% chance <coughs> that you 
get the coin and then still only being relevant in some matchups that seems too unlikely. Exactly. Honestly, I like this nerf. I don't hate it. Yeah. On the one hand, but on the other hand, I also couldn't care less. Because I've never, in my personal experience, again, this ex this rotation playing more aggressive mm -hmm. decks, I've never actually seen Oceana be bounced. Never once. Yeah, because aggressive decks usually don't take the Warrior to Fatigue. Oh, I, I've taken Warriors to Fatigue plenty, but uh, they usually just play one of Lysiana and then, uh, well, yeah, then it, I'll be done. The bounce is mostly important when the opponent also has a Lysiana. Um, yeah, so... That's, that's true, that's true. So maybe maybe uh, the Lysiana impact will become less and people will just stop running bounces altogether and it's just one Lysiana. Yeah. I can see the, the mirror being largely unchanged with, with just without bounces. It's like... This primarily affects the mirror. Yeah. It be doesn't really affect much else because other stuff loses to Luciano anyway when he but gets there. Because uh, because the mirror is inherently already balanced. Like yeah. this doesn't seem to change too much except for except for the thing that everyone has been complaining about, which is that the mirrors go for too long. Yeah, exactly. They which go for like, a long time. Uh, someone has actually had a really great post on Reddit about uh, a suggestion to fix mm -hmm. that. As a matter of fact, there have been two different people suggested two different fixes. One is the Mechathune. Uh, the other one is actually one that I'm also a big fan of, which is uh, just concede. Just concede. So the idea, and rightfully so, was uh, you can win more faster matchups in the time you're saving by conceding the one slow one. But those are fun. Those are those are mind mind games. I like those. No, I, I'm I'm not hating on those either. I'm never okay. What JJ said, never concede a game. By the way, that was that was blasphemy. You never concede a Hearthstone game just because. I, I personally never do that either. But uh, theoretically, uh, the math says it checks out. Never do it. Never ever 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 do it unless you play. Like no 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 unless don't do it. Just don't do it. You'll never play that many games. So, uh, I. I love the rogue nerfs. I like the Elysiana. It just makes sense to shorten games. I don't think the impact on the regular, the full meta, and the the hit to the warrior will be as big as people may think, because the Elysiana mostly is important in the mirrors. Yeah, I mean Elysiana doesn't affect the warrior at all. If anything, rogue going down <laughs> could potentially affect warrior because that's like one of the main matchups. But then again, that just means that again token druid Other and Murloc Shaman will yeah, be more prevalent. Kind of maybe Zul Warlock. Yeah. Although Zul Warlock should, by all intents and purposes, be less prevalent because it's also like the single best matchup against uh, Tempo, I believe. Yeah. And those, then again, also still for the most part lose to Warrior. I can and, see that. I can see the amount of weapon stack going down in Warrior. If if the rogue becomes a lot less prevalent, then people will play less weapon tech, which is that's how control decks adjust, right? They'll play something else. Um. So the question now, I guess, is how does it affect the meta overall? You said less weapon stack. I'm yeah. not sure. It also, it kind of depends on Bomb Warrior and where that's going. I, I think less weapon tech. For sure. um, and then there is the idea that, again, Token Druid and Murloc Shaman, I've mentioned those a lot, are going kind to of become more prevalent, I would assume. I think Silence Priest gets a bit of a boost as well, just mm -hmm. by comparison. Uh, also, like, I think those two uh, were some of the worst matchups for Silence Priest, so. That gets better. The as warrior well. and the uh, the rogue. I think so. At least one of I think one of them was like literally like thirty percent or something. That's possible. Um, so that helps that, and of course the hunters get better as well. Yeah, which is somewhat concerning because the hunters have been sneaky strong. Uh, for like I've actually checked HS replay like today specifically for this. Yeah. And HS replay lists a secret hunter as the most like deck. the uncontended best deck as like yeah. at like two percent above uh, the rogue. It I does. Think. It does. Also, the mech hunter seems. I, I seem to run into the mech hunter more, <coughs> and it seems well, even uh, no, more explosive. Actually, Token Druid is the second best deck according yeah. to yeah. For some reason, it's still listed uh, on as the second best deck there. And then we get mech hunter. Uh, we get mech hunter, and if we look at the matchups, we can see that. Um, what, what do we see? Oh, right. Uh, the Secret Hunter already beats uh, both decks anyway, so that's not affected by too Very, much. very close. If anything, negatively. Mm -hmm. um, and then it loses to... Uh, the Mech Hunter loses to Temporal Rogue, but also wins against Control, so that's also kind of unaffected by this, actually. Uh, what I was, I, oh, yeah, right. I was saying uh, Priest. Silence Priest. Oof. Win rate. Um, not a good... <laughs> not a good win rate. Am I caught, though? It has a 46% win rate against Temporal. Which is fine. And a 29.4% against Control Which is Warrior. not fine. 
And that's going to stay. The Alessiana does not alter that. No, no, it doesn't alter the win rate, but it might alter the played rate of the decks. Maybe. Which makes that's, them the overall possible. win rate better. I mean, Sounds Priest still sadly doesn't have that many good matchups, although you can certainly adjust the deck in some ways. We yeah. made a video on that. Um, you can go check that out if you want to. Part of a budget series. Yeah, actually, I think that... That, video, that, it's that not, deck turned Those nerfs are actually kind of good for us. Yeah. Because... Obviously, we don't use Elysiana anyways, because it's a legend. Yes. And we haven't made the Rogue video yet. I have not made the Rogue. And, of course, some of our planning for the Rogue is now yeah. kind of thrown out the window. We're gonna... But for the videos that we've already yeah. released, this is kind of good, because mm -hmm. those decks that we've already released are now, obviously, Strong. overall slightly stronger. And relatively. But by the fact that the best decks got slightly weaker. Correct. So, uh, so yeah, yeah, check out the... Uh, Token Druid, both the full one and the budget one. The Murloc Shaman, the budget one, we haven't made a full one, although it's literally just one. And the difference. budget control warrior. The budget control warrior, and one also. The more interesting ones. Maybe if you want to play around with something a bit less popular, the, priest. the Silence Priest yeah. um, is also completely unaffected. We did, we did make it We did make it work um, surprisingly well. Yeah, we made, we made it work better, it than better than we expected. The statistics it to. would mm -hmm. suggest. So, uh, you up for some experiments, you can go have a look at it. And that. of course, now is the time to reconsider some of the loses. Yes. Depending on how the meta develops. Exactly. Because weapons tech, mm. we'll see. We, we can't really predict all of that right now because it's sort of a cascading effect to, in a, to a lot of degrees. But uh, in a couple of weeks, we'll definitely see how stuff turns out. Because it's kind of like a bit of a new meta being introduced. One thing changes and thereby nothing changes. Kind of goes on like that. Butterfly effect. Uh, we also have played Life is Strange on this channel. Just saying. Pro tip. Pro tip. Pro tip for the big ones. So that's that's our opinion on that one. Let us know what you think, though. We uh, we really are curious because I've seen a lot of people push for those nerfs, but I've also seen some people who might not be satisfied with this. There's because... a lot of people that have complained about Boom not being nerfed. Yeah. That's, and that's... some people have been complaining about Mage not being nerfed. But... Uh, I can see Conjurer's Calling and Boom be being possible cards to be nerfed. Um... From personal experience, Mage not played enough, and Boom, how are you going to nerf Boom? Yeah, and also I think the problem, and I feel like this is generally a problem in the Hearthstone community, is that whatever the deck is that you've lost two matches to yeah. like within the last mm -hmm. week is automatically the worst thing ever. Yeah, exactly. Because you got beat by the same thing a couple times. And the problem is that people jump onto that way too much. The answer is tech against exactly what, yeah. what's killing you. And also, the thing is that uh, oftentimes that the nerfs that the community suggests are not validated by statistics and also if you look into the implications of those nerfs yeah. because there's a lot more going on than meets the eye. Yeah. And um, Rogue was definitely the right yeah, deck Yeah, Rogue was nerf. correct. Rogue was correct for sure. And um, I mean, the Warrior one, again, it, it doesn't affect anything except for the game time, which... Yep. It's sensible. I, I don't think there was a bad nerf in this in this update. Uh, overall, I, I would give this a, a, an A. Uh, as opposed to, we've seen updates before that were absolute disasters. I'm just going to rem remember the, uh, the the chain gang one, when, when Shutterwalk got taken down, uh, when Kingsbane got destroyed by uh, by just like, nerfing um, the, uh, the lifestyle, poison. the leeching poison. Uh, that that nerf that patch was an absolute train wreck and just unforgivably terrible. But this one is great. Uh, I really like the implications, and we're gonna see how it's gonna play out. So uh, I think that's enough for us today. Let us know what you think. Like I said, uh, go join our Discord, have some talk with the community. It's always a good discussion in there for sure. You can leave a like on the video. We we would appreciate that, and um, you can share it with a friend as well if you want to help us out a little bit and uh, get some more opinions on what's going on. So uh, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. JJ. That's it? That's it.